What was your biggest most regrettable it's not a phase, mom. It's my life, that, in fact, turned out to be just a phase and not your life. When I was a teenager, early zeros, I was waiting for my mother to pick me up and was wearing one of those crappy sports wrist watches. It was itching me so I took it off for a second, but then she arrived and because I was struggling to get it back on my wrist, I looped it around the equally crappy chain I had around my neck in a rush to get out the door. My mom asked me about it in the car, and I told her this was my new style and I planned to wear it like that every day. She rolled her eyes. I wore that watch on a chain around my neck every single day for 3 years or so. There are even professional family photos where I'm wearing it because I refuse to take it off. One day, the chain broke and I lost the watch. I was in high school at that point anyway and it was a major lady repellent. So, phase over. I mean you really committed to it though lol. I was very into the transformers when I was a wee lad in the 1980s. One day, I decided to change my name to the name of my favorite Autobot. My name was lame, and I wanted an awesome transformer name. And I was very insistent that my parents only call me by my new name. Calling me by my old name would cause a big fat tantrum on my part. So for the better part of a week, my poor parents had to call me Wheeljack. Immensely disappointed that your username isn't Wheeljack. I think your past self would be too. My cat ear phase. I wore cat ears every single day, everywhere. I had like 20 pairs of them. Now everyone thinks I'm a furry. My daughter is currently going through a cat ear phase. Fortunately, her bestie is also experiencing a cat ear phase, so they're having a good time being weird and adorable together. Snorting my first painkiller spent over half my life addicted and so high I didn't know who I was I still struggle with temptation on a bad day or if things seem to be going south. I went to a car show once as a teen, and the only newer car there was some chick's PT cruiser. It was hot glittery pink, and at the time I was obsessed. I insisted that one day I would have a hot pink car, with pink seats, pink dash, pink carpets, etc. I was pretty heavily goth at the time, so my parents just rolled their eyes. I know PT cruisers are badly made cars but they always came in the best colors. I considered a pastel teal PT cruiser for my first car mostly because it wasn't black, white, gray, or beige. Trench coat phase after I saw the matrix. Turns out a goofy freaking 13 year old doesn't look or feel as badass in one as Neo does. Edit. I was a sheltered kid in a sheltered town. I'd heard of Columbine but had not seen the video and had made no connection between the coat and the event. You gotta wear the sunglasses too. I had a posh phase once, spoke in a terrible British accent, put my pinky out while drinking tea, said pardon a lot, my brother told me to stop so I did. Every once in a while I break into my exaggerated English accent when talking to my cat, but I don't know if that counts. I got a tattoo when I was 21, a fairly big one, because I wanted to show my parents I was an adult and could do what I wanted with my body. I absolutely loathe it now and I'm looking to get it removed. Atheist here with a giant cross on my back. I was obsessed with the craft in junior high and was convinced that I was a witch. I basically just drew pentagrams all over my schoolwork and wore a lot of rings on my fingers. That's it. I think a lot of us 90s girls did this. I started a coven with my friends in 8th grade. We would buy wicker books from Barnes and Noble and one girl took it way too seriously and got mad at us when we didn't do our reading assignments. My friend and I decided we were going to open a bar in Jamaica with exotic snakes and glass cages and the walls at each booth. We convinced ourselves it would be amazing for at least 2 years in college. It was going to be called Fred Rose. My entire family made fun of me for it. Once we got out of college, we realized it was not feasible and joined the office grind. We're also two white guys with no ties to Jamaica. R.I.P. Fred Rose. I made up a girlfriend named Sarah that died of cancer and told everyone how I was depressed and wanted to kill myself. I was 8. I never got to experience anything like that as a kid. I suppose the closest thing was back when I got into paintball. I was obsessed. Turns out it was just a 3 year phase since the entire paintball community sort of died off all around the same time. 
Yeah paintball took a massive hit with the economy plunging in 2009. It's a really expensive hobby and never truly recovered. Acting like a thug. Being 12 years old from a white middle class family but acting like a career criminal. Born in the streets. Who had done a nickel of hard time in the clink. At the mall on a Friday night giving you the crazy eye with my backward hat and baggy pants. If someone did actually try me we would usually just bump chests and say do something then go ahead then no you do something homie walking in circles with my hands by my side because I'm more concerned about looking gangster than I am about defending myself. 9 stroke 10 times nothing would happen but I would definitely chalk it up as a win for my crew anyway. Side note though one of my best homies headbutted a guy with terrible headbutt technique and it knocked them both unconscious. But because my friend woke up and got up first he declared himself the victor. It was surprisingly hard to argue with that logic. Also I had my nickname embroidered on my fitted hat from Lids Lily but because of the calligraphy style font and bad spacing it appeared to read Lyle or Lily as most would pronounce it and that sucked but spent like a whole month's allowance on that stupid hat never to be worn again but also never forgotten by my friends. Sincerely yours, Lily. Sounds like a good day on the streets to me. I wore a top hat with an anime pin on it for around a year. Met one of my current best friends while wearing it. IDK how he could bear to speak to me after that. Genuinely laughed out loud at this one. Thanks for sharing. Ugh. My tramp stamp. Thought it made me look so hot and flirty. Now I'm a professor and always have to wear high waisted pants so none of my students ever see it. Hum I have one of those. Except I got a skull with heart shaped eyes in 2006. Then 2010 comes along and a show called Monster High comes out and world well, you know it. The logo of the show looks exactly like my tattoo. So now I have a Monster High tramp stamp and have to wear a one piece to the beach when I'm with my kids. Or else I get called Frankie Stein or SMTHG stupid all day. There was a time when I believed that I wanted to enter seminary and study for the priesthood. Mum said, it's a passing fancy. You led an intensely secular life and are only flirting with the idea because you enjoy time spent at church playing your organ as a lay person. She was right, but I wouldn't admit it at the moment. By my junior year in high school, the notion had passed. Due to being a massive Harry Potter fan my stepsister just assumed I liked Star Wars. I was stupid and embarrassed because saying I wasn't a fan would make me less of a nerd so I put up with years of Star Wars gifts and collectibles including figurines, honesties, PJS, movie tickets, books and so on. I still haven't watched all of them. It only stopped when I moved out of home. I'll take any Star Wars stuff you don't want. Oh god, acting. After years of theater starting in elementary through college, I thought that was it. Loved being on stage. My. Korean. Mom would try and bribe me with fast food and other contraband instead of heading out to classes and auditions. Now I work in IT but still take classes here and there. So. Compromise. I went through an M&M phase where I decided to speak more urban. It was basically me saying yo a lot and making fulsome gestures with my hands. I would work lyrics into my everyday vernacular like how else do you get to the booty and rap god usually they were completely out of context and inappropriate. I called my friends my peoples. I'm cringing into the floor just thinking about it. When I was 16, I kept my hair dyed blue and kept myself fairly busy earning money to keep buying the hair dye so it would stay that way. One summer, one of our cats, a grey and white one had to have a leg amputated after being bitten by a snake, and I noticed that the skin beneath the fur was the same color, in the same pattern, as her fur had been, and it was just enough to pass idiot teenage muster. So, I shaved my head with the intention of getting my entire scalp tattooed blue, thinking that when my hair grew back in, it would be forever blue. I even found a tattoo guy willing to do the job. But only if an experimental square inch worked. I'm still blonde. But I do have a tattoo on my scalp that's just a blue square. My mother was too dumbfounded to say anything. And my stepdad just walked out onto the back porch to stare into the yard for a while. It was never brought up again once it was clear the experiment didn't work. I never dyed my hair again after that either. That's freaking hilarious lol. Sad part is we still have phases as we age. 
Hit 40 and I had my first I'm going to get cancer and die phase. Little later it was I'm going to have a heart attack and die phase. I've had friends all seem to go through something similar. That realization of our own mortality. Plus people my age get wanderlust and chase tail or buy a new sports car. Did neither thankfully. M46 and went through a viking phase. I was obsessed with vikings. Read books, watch shows and docs. Learned all I could about them. Did the ancestry.com and found I have very little Scandinavian blood. So, that happened. But now it's pirates. Wanting colored contacts. My vision was fine. But I wanted purple eyes. I still think it would be cool. But I'm not going out of my way for that. My anime phase. I don't really watch a lot of anime now but I wouldn't mind watching it from time to time. Especially when I was 13 stroke 14 and went through a whole phase of watching this one show and becoming dark because this character was only into dark things and wore the color black all the time. I also remember thinking how super hot he was. Now I don't ever want to remember this time at all. I went through a weird phase as a child where I almost exclusively watched the weather channel for a couple of years. This was back in the early 2000s, when there was no entertainment programming, just repeating news segments and local on the 8s, the latter of which I got really excited for. I was also obsessed with watching this stupid slideshow on the local access channel and memorizing the lunch menus for every school in the district. My mom would get angry at me for doing this. She even took me to see a child psychiatrist, who decided there was nothing wrong with me. I was just strange. But really, I was absolutely obsessed with PowerPoint. I made all sorts of presentations in my free time, and I was convinced I would become a professional PowerPoint maker, which no one at the time told me wasn't a thing. It turned out to be a phase because being forced to use PowerPoint today makes me groan. I'd rather spend hours editing a video or writing an essay, especially if that PowerPoint presentation requires an accompanying speech. I find this phase to be regrettable because I missed a lot of great children's shows of the time, like Lizzie McGuire and as told by Ginger. I just wanted to watch the most mundane, unmemorable things on TV. I also was obsessed with the Weather Channel back in the early 2000s. However, I do not hate PowerPoint. Oh my god I thought I was a redneck, 18f, only wore camo, adopted a southern accent, tried trading in my brand new infinity for a dirt bike, not a good chapter of my life. I feel like I never experienced life as a teen, I never got to tell my mom she didn't understand me and storm off to my room. Same, now that I've moved out and am getting my life together. I can feel my inner child teen screaming at me. It's painful BC I want to be the cringy teen with the anime merch, posters, and favorite bands. But unfortunately I'm an adult with a job, I'm in college, and a crappy situation mentally. Honestly, it hurts. I used to wear clip-on ties, over t-shirts. I really wanted to start a trend and I thought I was so cool and quirky. Can't believe that phase of my life was real lol. You go get that clip on and keep fighting the good fight. You know you still have them all in that shoebox. I will join your cause. Scene fashion. I backcombed my hair to hook and back. And got quite a few facial piercings I still have scars for lol. The worst part was the actual clothes. I still cringe thinking about when I wore these neon blue leopard print leggings with a pink tutor skirt. And all the tacky cheap beaded jewelry my mom told me not to leave the house like that and i told her she didn't get it all the cringe i have a real whopper i loved anime as a teenager this was in the 90s so it wasn't that mainstream yet because i had no interest in anything else i took a year off japanese then because i still had no other ambition or interest i signed up in the military to go to japan for eight years got out Went to college and because I still didn't know what I wanted to do, I studied Japanese. By this time, the interest in anime had worn off, but learning culture and history was cool. So, I went to college to learn Japanese, as a major. Six goddamned years, a ton of core classes and not a single interest in any other thing. I was done with the Japanese language at that point, but because near the end, my class literally couldn't be run without me, I stayed. I stayed because I felt like it would be a waste if I changed it. Like everything I had done up to that point was a lie. 
Here I am with a degree in Japanese language history and culture and I'm not at all interested in it anymore. I'm looking for a real job. Have been since I got out of college but for now I work for a temp company for a Japanese air conditioning company. I became extremely religious in my late teen years. Planned on being a missionary to FARC in Colombia kind of extreme. My mother tried to tell me that I might feel differently in the future and to be careful. I screamed that, if anything, I wanted to be more extreme. I run a liquor store now and she is kind enough not to rub my face in it. I think she's mostly glad I'm not trying to convert godless drug lord revolutionaries while dodging AK-47 fire. Anime, emo stuff, MCR and the like. I still am mildly into them but nowhere near the levels I used to be. As much as I hate my emo phase, I don't think I would be who I am now without it. Same goes for anime. For the record I still love MCR. They're a great band. I just don't use them as a substitute for a personality anymore. I still love listening to MCR every now and then. I thought I was asexual cause I'd never liked anyone before and so I told my mom I wanted to grow up and live alone and never find love because people only made you feel worse once they left. Evidently it's worth it and I'm not asexual. Nothing is sad until it's over, then everything is. My gymnastics. Then I slipped up and paralyzed myself. Had to learn to walk again which took 3 years. Interestingly, where my parents discouraged me from wasting time on gymnastics before the accident. After the accident and my recovery they encouraged me to take it up again. But I can't. The accident and the horror surrounding it still gives me nightmares some nights. A tongue in cheek comment I've heard gymnasts say is that a serious gymnast will either become a gymnastics coach for kids or a physician. Both due to injuries. I've seen two college gymnasts injure themselves so badly they lost their scholarships, but both became doctors due to their interest in medicine with all the injuries. I had an emo phase but it never really ended tbh. I still love the music and I still look a bit old but in a more age appropriate way. However I had a crust punk phase in my early 20s. I was broke as heck but not totally homeless. Hung out with other crusties. Loved folk punk. Still do though. Didn't shower. Got stick in pokes and had bands play in my house. I was an alcoholic at the time. I never hopped trains or any of that crap because I thought it was stupid and dangerous. I would tell my crusty friends how cool it was though, but smelling bad, being drunk, eating and wearing garbage? Oh heck yeah. It's cringy how much I spoke about political ideas I had no true understanding of and the way I looked was atrocious but I definitely met some interesting people and gained a new perspective on life. I appreciate what I learned but also yikes. My straight edge phase for sure. I was in 8th grade and super into hardcore punk. So having smoked weed once and having no sexual experience at all, I decided I was never gonna do any of that stuff. Lasted about 8 months till freshman year when a girl was willing to touch my penis. So I threw the whole lot out lol. I'm freaking straight edge bro. Girl touches pp. Okay where's the m? My scene phase. Huge hair looked like I had an butt for hair. 100 silly bands. I love boobies. Ek bracelets. So much eyeliner. Crazy music. But I actually don't regret it. Oh god. I forgot all about the boobies bracelets. Thank you. When I was 16 I wanted to gauge my ears so bad but my mom talked me out of it and said I would absolutely regret it. 12 years later thank god she stopped me. I just turned 18. I was going to get a blink 182 tattoo on my back, told my dad about it, who didn't give a crap, who then told my mom, who then told me that if I did it I am not allowed to live at her house. I told her it wasn't a phase and they made me who I am. After much arguing I caved and didn't get it. I am now 30 and thank freaking god for my mother. I used to dress like a mall goth. Me and my group of friends all dressed like mall goths. We basically had the same hot topic staple wardrobe. My mom was supportive, ish, about it but teased me relentlessly for being so terribly cliche lol. I have a painful vivid memory of being 16 and crossing my arms in defiance when my mom asked us why we were dressed the way we were, and huffing because mom we don't wanna be cookie cutter like everyone else okay. It's about being an individual. Double quote. My mother, rest her soul. Actually snorted and said look at the four of you in a mirror and tell me, 
What's not cookie cutter about that, you cookie cutter, just a different shape and you all I still think about that to this day I didn't appreciate that wisdom then but I do now. I'm still a more goth at heart though so maybe it wasn't a phase. I had a funny relationship with introversion. I romanticize the idea of the lonely, in the corner reading a lone girl persona and internalized it so much I developed horrible social and general anxiety as a result. Luckily I came out of it but not without scars. My anxiety, not social, is still horrible. I am still an introvert but got over the I'm not like other girls phase post 20. I was an otaku before otaku was a thing, and not a cool kind who just wears the shirts and recommends you cool shows when you ask. No, I was the cringy kind, the kind people avoided. I Naruto ran between classes, played the YUGOTCG at lunch, etc. I was like that all through school too, as late my junior year I was still glumping. I think that was phrase, I mean the thing where you jumped on someone unexpectedly. Not regrettable at this point but I grew up in the middle of the cold war. The Ruskies were the biggest bad guys. I hid under multiple desks waiting for nuclear war. I've never met a Russian person in real life that I haven't gotten along with. I guess heavy in death metal. Like I still like it from time to time, but I mellowed out now, and wouldn't call myself a metalhead anymore. Still keep the long hair that I cut every couple years to let it grow back. Also I'm keeping old Opeth in my playlist at all times. Being a mall goth was just who I am. Mom I am 34 and no longer a mall goth. But I do still look back fondly at all the stupid crap I used to wear. It was a lot of fun. Ugh. Calling myself an empath. I grew up being that person everyone leans on and uses for free therapy because I'm sensitive and bad at setting boundaries. Plus people think the outcasts won't judge you. So when I heard of this mystical idea that some people can pluck other people's emotions out of the air, and totally not making guesses based on body language, setting, etc, I knew for sure that was me. Now I look back on that whole friend group where we were all empaths and I cringe so hard. We talked about crap like astral projecting and gaining clairvoyance and metaphysically hurting each other with stupid drama. We weren't even kids, we were a bunch of adults pretending magic existed. Oof. I spent time in that crowd. I was excluded for not having magical powers like, real example, street lamps sometimes blinking out as you pass under them. Hum I thought to myself man I have had so many phases and then thought but none I regret. So I guess I'm doing okay. I was super emo in high school, except I loved One Direction for some reason. But I don't regret that. It's kinda fun to see how much my style has changed. In reality the only thing that I regret is how socially anxious I was as a teen. I look like I'm in physical pain in every photo taken of me because I couldn't feel comfortable in front of the camera for the life of me. That's not really a phase I chose though. It was just my state of being. I actually took up photography specifically because it allowed me to be behind the camera instead of in front of it. Now I get mad when people don't put the enthusiasm and effort into taking pictures of me that I put into taking pictures of them. It's a complete 180. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.